Hey everyone, today I'm going to be installing a Garmin Echomap Ultra 102 SV chart plotter sonar combo along with the GT54 UHD transducer onto my 2020 Hobie Pro Angler 360 kayak. I have been running Garmin on my boat this year and I have been extremely impressed with the performance. So I'm really excited to get this technology on my kayak. And uh, if you are running any Hobie kayak with the Guardian transducer shield, this installation could also serve as a guide to you as many of the steps will be the same. Um, so let's get started. So the first step is removing the Guardian retractable transducer shield, uh, which is located on the bottom of the hull. So I'm just gonna climb underneath the kayak and remove the screws that are holding it in place. So the way the Guardian retractable transducer shield is set up, there are two parts. So you've got a plate here and then there's a frame. So if you have a 2D transducer, um, you're generally fine to install it inside. So it's gonna be right here on the inside and that will shoot through. Um, but if you're going to use a side imaging transducer, that's going to be installed on the bottom because you don't want obstructions on either side so you can get a clear reading. Um, but that also puts your transducer at risk. So what this allows you to do, and once I take it apart, you'll see, um, but it's going to allow you to retract that side imaging transducer, or if you bump into something, it's going to bump up. So it's gonna bring it up into the hull to keep it safe. So when you get it from the factory, the plate and the frame are screwed together, um, and it's just flush against the hull. But now that I'm gonna use it, I'm going to unscrew these six screws here so that I can start to install my transducer. Now that I've removed the screws, this plate is now retractable and there's a bungee running on each side here. So this is what it looks like from the other side. Now the next step, I will be removing these two screws here as I am installing a side imaging transducer and this piece will come out as that's where my cable will run. <laughs> now that I have the plate out, I'm gonna grab my transducer and mock it up so I can install it. Included with the Guardian system is this transducer guard here, which sits and uh, typically protects the nose of the transducer. But with the design of this Garmin transducer, it sits forward a little bit. Um, so unfortunately, this is not compatible with it. I did watch a few other videos online where people were cutting the plate and coming up with different ways of installing this. But I wanted a clean install, so I did some research and found the uh, Burley Pro Guardian Transducer Protector, which is made of ABS. So the way this works, the transducer will be mounted on here, and this will actually sit over top and protect it. Um, but it, the uh, transducer can shoot through, and it just protects it further from any damage of being hit in addition to um, the transducer shield retracting it. So this will be a nice clean install and it'll keep my transducer safe. Included with this Garmin transducer is this plastic piece here that is pre-drilled and uh, this allows you to mount it onto a trolling motor. But this came in really handy for me today as I was able to use it to mark the holes that I'm going to uh, use to mount the transducer to the plate. So I used the back four holes here. I made sure to line it up perfectly uh, and I used the, these holes on the sides of the plate to help just to make sure it's all symmetrical and in place. So I just took a Sharpie and marked those out and uh, now I'm gonna go ahead and drill those holes and mount the transducer. So I've gone ahead and drilled my first two holes and uh, what I found handy was uh, first of all, I marked them out with a the Sharpie. Then I used a centering punch uh, just to create a little divot in there. Uh, then I went with a smaller drill bit just to make sure that it was nice and centered. And then I went up to the 532nd drill bit as these are M4 screws. So next thing I did was uh, I put, I used that trolling motor plate on here as a template. I put two of the screws in just temporarily just to hold it in place. 
So now when I drill those last two holes, they're gonna be perfectly lined up. I've got my four holes drilled now, and I just wanted to mention one thing, is I did have a little bit of a clearance issue with the, the top two screws. Um, so there's the 2D transducer bracket here. I've noticed in some videos that people will just cut this off. Um, I decided just to take a Dremel and just carve out a little bit at the base, just so that my screw head could fit and also sit flush. So now that I've got all these holes drilled, I am ready to mount my transducer. Alrighty, so I'm just gonna pop the transducer through here and then just set it down. So it will be easier to start get these top two screws started just because with the cable there and with these uh, brackets it makes it a little tight so i did have to fiddle around a little bit just to uh, get the transducer level and all the screws going in straight so everything is good now and we are in business so next step is to install the burly pro transducer protector so what's really nice about this item is that it's designed to fit with these top two holes here. So that's gonna be a lot easier. I can just fasten those down and uh, then it will be, it'll make it a lot more smooth to drill the remainder of the holes and it'll keep everything in place. So I've got the top two fasteners in place. I'm just gonna flip that over. Grab the washers and the nuts. And get those fastened down. To tighten these down, I'm using a seven millimeter socket. So one thing I just noticed afterward, the top two screws are actually longer. So this one, I accidentally used a short one. So this one's good. This one wouldn't tighten down all the way. So now I've got the right screw in there and should be good to go. All right, so I've got a little table set up here where I've been doing my drilling. And I put a clamp to hold this in place. So now I'm just gonna start at the back and drill out my holes. So now I'm just gonna put this fastener in place, which will just also help hold it while I'm uh, drilling the other holes as well. Alrighty, so I've got the eight fasteners in place here and uh, this is all complete and I'm pretty happy with the way it looks. Um, I feel like the transducer is nice and safe in here. Um, and you know, if you're running Garmin, I highly recommend checking out the Burley Pro Guardian Transducer Protector. Um, I have no affiliation with them, but I think it's a great product and I didn't have to modify much at all on this. Um, as I mentioned, I've seen some other videos where people are coming up with some different ways to install it, which is perfectly fine. Uh, I just think this is nice and clean and easy. So the next step, I will be reinstalling this on the bottom of the kayak, running the transducer cable through, as well as power cable, and then setting up my Garmin unit. Uh, so I'm excited to almost be there, um, but I do have to work on another project tonight, so I am going to finish this up tomorrow. Okay, I'm back. So now I'm going to reinstall the Guardian Retractable Transducer Shield on the bottom of the kayak, and I'm going to run this transducer cable. Um, there's a scupper uh, just right below the seat. And then over the scupper, there's this plate here. So all I need to do is uh, just remove this one screw to access it. Okay, so there's a rope inside here with a little pulley system. And the way this works is I'm going to tie this rope onto this rope here that is uh, on the plate, which is going to allow me to raise and lower my transducer. And that is controlled by this cable over here on the right side. So that's, that's how I can retract it. I can lock it into place when the kayak's not in use and I'll raise and lower it when I, you know, I'm beaching the kayak or I'm in shallow water. Before I climb underneath to uh, attach the Guardian, I'm just going to make sure this rope is easy to access because that will also help me hold this in place and I'll tie that knot onto the rope when I'm down there. Okay, so I'm just gonna grab that rope and do a couple overhand knots. 
make sure that it's in the middle and then if that's okay to hang there, I will just start feeding my transducer cable up. There, I'm just gonna go up top and pull it through. Okay, now that I have that cable up and out of the way, I can reinstall the frame. So now what's going to happen if I want to raise or lower, if I happen to bump into something, it's gonna pop up like that. Perfect. One very important note that I forgot to mention, uh, before you tie this rope onto your transducer plate, onto that other rope, you wanna make sure that it's running through the pulley um, as this will allow you to raise and lower your transducer. So I'm ready to reattach the plate over the scupper and you'll see on the end here that there are little notches for that transducer cable. So you just wanna make sure to line that up. Okay, so I've reattached the plate and now my transducer cable is up on deck here. The next step, I'm gonna run it into the hull through this through hull fitting. And then there's two additional through hull fittings in the cockpit. So I'm gonna run that cable to either side, you know, whichever side that I decide to uh, install my fish binder, which for me will be on the right side. So the through hull fitting has rubber inserts here and Hobie includes a bag of different sizes. So you can actually select one that's notched out for your size of cable and uh, it will allow you to keep a watertight seal. So I'm just gonna go ahead and remove this. So I'm going to remove that rubber gasket and then I'm gonna take this guy out here. And now open up this bag and find, whoa, <laughs> find the one that works with my Garmin cable. So I found the insert that fits around my transducer cable. Um, so I'm going to start feeding the cable into the hull. But first, uh, there's a rubber gasket on the back here that you wanna make sure the flat side is down against the hull. Um, on the other side here, there's a bit of a groove, so that fits into the fitting, and it just makes it a waterproof seal. So now, start feeding this through. Okay, so there we go. That'll be flat side down. And then I'll attach this. Put that in place. Line up that gasket. Okay, so that's all in place. Now I will start feeding my transducer cable into the hull. And you'll see here, there is foam inside the kayak, so I went ahead and took that out of the way just so that I can feed the cable. And then I'm gonna put that right back in. And I should have mentioned, it's obvious, but uh, there's a hatch here that you can access the hull. So it makes it really nice for this installation. Easily I can just, as you could see, just grab that cable. And uh, then it's not too far to get to my through hull fitting over here. So not too tricky to feed it through. All right, so now that my cable is in, I'm going to reinstall the through hull fitting. Oh, there we go. Make sure everything's all lined up. There, so that is nice and clean. No cables in the way. It's gonna be underneath the seat, so really happy with that. So I ran the cable through the hull and there are a number of foam pieces in the kayak so I tucked it in behind and the last step will be running it 
um, up to this through hole fitting and then plugging it into my fish finder. Um, so I will figure out how much cable I need and then zip tie the rest. Um, but I did want to mention that it's very important to put the foam back. Um, I took it out just to feed the cable, but it's very important that you put that foam back in the kayak as it serves as support for the deck and also uh, flotation material. Okay, so now I'm just gonna remove this. So as I mentioned, I'm putting my fish finder on the right side. So I'm right-handed and I just feel like that'll be handy. Okay, so I'm gonna feed this cable. Ah! Okay, I'm gonna spinning myself in between my trailer here. There we go. Okay, so I'll get out of the way. <laughs> okay, so I fit the cable and now I'm just gonna mock it up so I know how much cable I may want. And then as I mentioned, I'll zip tie the rest and just tuck it underneath. <laughs> so I've mentioned a couple times in the video, probably more than a couple that I if I can avoid drilling holes in the kayak, that's the route I've been taking. So I picked up a couple products to mount my fish finder on the atrial system without having to drill any holes. Um, the first is a Hobie product. It's the atrial Mighty Mount. So this here, let's open it up. So this is going to open up and mount on the bar here. And then I also picked up the Yak Attack fish finder mount. Um, this is gonna be really nice, so I can just mount my unit directly onto this. And uh, I just wanna give a shout out to Yak Attack. They are awesome people. I've picked up a few different products from them this year, and uh, I've been really happy with them. So I'm excited to get this going as well. So this, whoops. <laughs> This I'm gonna mount on here, and uh, I can simply just take off the head unit, throw it in the truck, and drive home. Exciting times, opening this baby up. It's gonna be awesome. There we go. <laughs> okay, so we got the power cable and the mounting bracket. That is solid. Hardware. So now that I have my fish finder out of the box, I'm gonna take the mounting bracket and just mount it onto that Yak Attack plate. So first thing I'll do here is remove those knobs. So the nice thing about the Yak Attack fish finder mount, um, it comes pre-drilled, so it's compatible with a ton of different fish finder models. So there's also hardware included. So I'll just line this up here. One tool that you will need to install the mounting hardware is a 1 hex key. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, install these four fasteners. Okay, so all the hardware is on now, and I'm just going to put it on the kayak. So then I can mock up the unit and make sure I've got enough cable, transducer cable, and also install the power cable as well. So I'll probably play with this a bit, pivot, angle it, but I think I think like that will be pretty good. There. Awesome. So now I'm just going to reattach the cradle. And then I can put the head unit on. So 
this just sits in on the bottom. And then there's a little piece on the back that locks it in place. Voila, it's awesome. I'm going to be running my Garmin unit direct to a battery that I'll be storing in the hull of the kayak. So now I'm just gonna get the power cable ready to connect to the battery. So this is the power cable here. Um, I've got the, the positive wire, the red, with a inline fuse, the negative wire, and then there's a brown and a blue wire. These are network ex for network accessories, which I don't need. So I'm just going to tape this off here with electrical tape and keep it protected. So that's all taped up. It's nice and tight and tidy, which is important as it helps keep water out. So now I'm going to crimp these heat shrink ring terminals to the power wire so that I can connect them to the battery. So now I'm going to crimp my wire. So I've got my ring terminal in place on my crimper. It's all centered, flat, ready for the wire. Now the next step will be the heat shrink. I would not suggest heat shrinking over a plastic kayak, so I've just moved down to the floor here. And I'm just gonna get started. Gotta let it heat up. There we go. Perfect. Now that my power cable is all ready to go, I'm going to feed it through the hull, up through the opening, um, and then I'll reinstall the through hull fitting and tidy up all the wires. So I ran my cables up and plugged them in, so now I know I have enough length on there. Um, next thing I'll do, I'll unplug them, run them through the rubber gasket, and then I will reinstall the through hull fitting. So this is my extra transducer cabling here. So I'm just going to Tidy this up here and throw a zip tie on there. So now I can just tuck that in, it's nice and tidy and out of the way. And I'm all ready to hook up to my battery and uh, hit the water. Thank you so much for checking out this video. This was a completely new style of video for me doing this installation. But if you are looking to install a Garmin unit on your Hobie kayak, hopefully you find it useful. Um, I always love to hear your comments and your questions in the comments below. So uh, let me know what you think of this video. I do have a couple of other cool gadgets I will be installing on my kayak, so watch for those videos soon. Uh, but I do a ton of different styles of fishing videos, so be sure to subscribe to see what else I'm up to. And uh, thanks again, and I'll see you guys soon.